New York City is considering extending Manhattan Island with 1,760 acres of new reclaimed land, providing housing for 247,000 people and protecting the city against climate change. The idea of expanding Manhattan is not a new one. When the Dutch first founded New Amsterdam in 1623, the tip of the island was much smaller than today. The shoreline stretched along modern-day Pearl and Greenwich streets, and the colony was capped off to the north by a 12-foot wall, corresponding to modern-day Wall Street. However, over the next 200 years, as the colony expanded in popularity, so did its borders. By 1800, city residents had generated 127 new acres of reclaimed land using waste and landfill, the scale of which is revealed in an 1865 map of the island. While land reclamation was limited over the following century, in the 1970s, excavations from the World Trade Center, New York City Water Tunnel, and Kill Van Cole were used to fill in another 92 acres of land, which is now Battery Park City. While Manhattan has expanded significantly over time, this has not stopped visionaries from imagining more. In 1911, Canadian-American engineer Kenner Thompson made a proposal for a greater New York including a Manhattan Island extension, filling in the East River, new islands in the lower New York Bay, and new artificial rivers, adding 50 square miles to the city. However, the concept never gained traction, and as a result, faded from the public view. Then, a century later in 2011, the proposal was reintroduced by Columbia University professor Vishan Chakrabarti, this time to unite Manhattan and Governor's Island with a new neighborhood called Lolo. Once again, though, nothing materialized. Finally, in 2022, Rutgers University professor and economist Jason Barr introduced an even larger proposal called New Manhattan. New Manhattan would extend Manhattan Island two and a half miles south into the New York Harbor, absorbing Governor's Island with 1,760 acres of new reclaimed land increasing Manhattan's total land area by 12%. This land would be elevated 13 to 15 feet and surrounded with wetlands and marshlands, which would absorb storm surges and help protect against rising sea levels. On this reclaimed land, a new neighborhood would be established called New Manhattan, after the indigenous Lenape name for the island. Modeled after the Upper West Side, this neighborhood would have 178,000 new housing units for an estimated 247,000 people. In addition, the new neighborhood would have parks, bike and pedestrian paths, and subway line extensions for Routes 1 and G, helping integrate the neighborhood with the rest of New York City. In total, the new Manhattan project would cost tens of billions of dollars and take decades to complete. Speaking of decades, did you know that on average, you'll work 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year for 40 years, at a total of 80,000 hours? Well, it's true, and for most people, this time is their biggest opportunity to make a difference in the world. As a result, it's worth spending some time planning out. Fortunately, today's sponsor, 80,000 Hours, is here to help. They have spent the last 10 years conducting research with the sole aim of helping people find fulfilling, high-impact careers. As a nonprofit, everything they provide is free, including their website, where you can read their research into the most pressing issues facing humanity today and see recommendations on career paths. They also feature a career guide that I completed myself, which has been personally transformational helping me realize how I can use both my video production and aerospace engineering knowledge to make a positive impact on the world. To see what 80,000 Hours has to offer, simply go to 80,000hours.org slash futurology or click the link in the description to receive a free copy of their in-depth career guide and start planning a meaningful, impactful career today. Thank you 80,000 Hours, and now back to the video. First of all, New Manhattan would help alleviate the city's housing shortage. Since 2010, the number of jobs in New York City has increased 22%, while housing stock has only increased 4%. This has generated a severe housing shortage, driving up rental prices and making it hard for people to live affordably in the city. For example, my brother, who lives in the East Village, paid $3,700 a month last year with his roommate for a 500-square-foot apartment. 
With its 178,000 housing units, New Manhattan would increase the island's housing capacity by 15%, helping absorb the increased demand. In addition to all this, the project would generate massive real estate value. According to a 2016 paper from Jason Barr, Manhattan's developable land area had an estimated value of $1.74 trillion. By extrapolating this value across New Manhattan and accounting for inflation, the project would generate an estimated $270 billion in land value alone. And once developed, this price would increase even more, making the project very economically viable. Maybe most importantly though, the project would help protect the city against storm surges and rising sea levels. Superstorm Sandy in 2012 demonstrated just how devastating storm surges can be to lower Manhattan. And unfortunately, this problem is only worsening. By 2050, it is estimated that 37% of Lower Manhattan will be at risk for storm surges. By providing an elevated wetland protected shield around Lower Manhattan, New Manhattan would help protect the rest of the island, saving lives and potentially preventing billions of dollars in eventual flood damage. Lastly, on a more lighthearted note, New Manhattan would offer a pretty great close-up view of the Statue of Liberty. Despite these benefits, the project has drawn significant criticism. The first challenge with building New Manhattan is the cost. While it would eventually generate massive real estate value, building it would cost tens of billions of dollars. If the government funded it, this burden would fall on taxpayers. On the other hand, if it was privately funded, many of the new housing units would likely be expensive luxury apartments, which would not help the city's affordability issue at all. Not to mention, constructing the project and therefore seeing its benefits would take decades. In addition, the new artificial land would dramatically transform the historical geography of New York City and would strip Lower Manhattan of its coastline effects that would certainly generate resistance among locals. Furthermore, the land reclamation process would damage wildlife in the New York Harbor, which is just now starting to recover with the help of environmental initiatives. Lastly, many of the new housing units would likely be sold to people outside New York City who would then move in for the first time. These additional people would only worsen the city's already terrible traffic problem, which presents a daily headache for city residents. Yeah, the congestion in New York City is pretty insane. It's way easier just to walk somewhere or take a bike than actually drive, and the subways are often too crowded to even fit in them. Due to this effect, many New Yorkers oppose the project. They feel that the city should focus on improving its existing infrastructure, rather than opening up more people to the already strained system. Due to its large scale and controversial nature, New Manhattan has not advanced past the conceptual stage. Despite this, the appeal of massive real estate value and climate protection is only growing. While the full-scale New Manhattan may not be happening now, a much smaller version is on the horizon. On December 29, 2021, the City of New York released the Financial District and Seaport Climate Resilience Master Plan, which calls for new elevated developments in artificial land along Lower Manhattan, which will take 15 to 20 years to complete, at a total cost of 5 to 7 billion dollars. Over the coming years, this project will likely sprout up, representing the newest generation of Lower Manhattan expansion. And in the long term, who knows, we may eventually see the larger new Manhattan mega project take shape. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you'd like and subscribe to Futurology for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.